In the final weeks of October 1973, the Endurance 4 crew neared the end of their record-breaking mission. On the ground at Vandenberg, the ground support crew and the Endurance 5 astronauts were preparing to launch another big G atop a Titan 3M for the second year-long tour on the station. Everything was going according to plan, and on October 29, 1973, Endurance 4 lifted off from the launch pad at Space Launch Complex 6 at Vandenberg Air Force Base. With nearly a dozen successful launches of modules, Hebe's, and Big G's, everyone had a high degree of confidence that this mission, like all the others, would go as planned. And for the first two and a half minutes of the launch, everything was nominal, and the UA-1207 boosters separated flawlessly. However, about 11 seconds after booster separation, ground control noticed continually dropping pressure in the aerosene tank of the first stage of the Titan 3M. Two seconds later, ground controllers called for a launch abort, fearing the loss of pressure was due to a leak in the tank, which could result in an imminent explosion. The crew commander reacted quickly and initiated the abort sequence simultaneously separating the Big G crew compartment from the orbital module and firing the solid rocket motors on the launch escape tower, pulling the crew to safety just as the vehicle exploded above the Pacific Ocean. The asymmetric thrust of the tower needed to pull the Big G away from the rocket produced significant yawing rotation which took almost a minute to zero out. During this rotation, the crew jettisoned the tower, and after neutralizing the yaw and achieving a proper re-entry attitude, the six crew members prepared for a shallow ballistic re-entry. Less than a minute later, the crew was hurtling towards the Pacific Ocean 500 miles off the coast of California. While emergency crews scrambled to the hastily calculated landing site, abort procedures called for an early drag chute opening, and the crew waited for confirmation of deployment. After five agonizing seconds, the drogue deployed and began slowing the craft. Seven thousand feet above the water, the main chute deployed, as planned, and the crew continued their slow crawl back to Earth. That show was short, Vandenberg. Burn for mission. Meanwhile, rescue crews continued to make their way to the recovery site. Previously situated rescue crews moved into position, and after nearly fifteen minutes slowly floating back down to the waves. The Endurance 4 crew felt a jolt as the craft hit the water.
The rescue crews quickly approached, secured the craft, and began removing the crew, and they would have to wait just 25 minutes for the nearest rescue ship to arrive to transport the crew back home. After being secured aboard the rescue ship, the Endurance 4 crew was transferred to shore by helicopter. By then, an investigation into the cause of the booster failure had already begun, but it would be two years before the investigation completed, totally changing the Mole mission and inexorably altering its future. During Mole operations, spy satellite technology advanced at a rapid rate, and the Air Force quickly realized that the Mole no longer served a legitimate military purpose. Hexagon has more than lived up to the expectations set for it in the mid-1960s. Its panoramic cameras have recorded vast areas with the resolution necessary to fulfill its charter as our primary search and surveillance system. After several days of heated discussions, Air Force Space Command leaders decided that the Endurance 3 crew would return as planned and leave the mole unoccupied until the investigation into the Titan III first stage failure was complete. So, on November 1st, 1973, the Endurance 3 crew began shutting down the mole's non-essential systems, all but putting the station into hibernation. They loaded into their big G and undocked. Before leaving the vicinity of the station, the crew performed a fly around to capture photographs and video and do a visual inspection of the entire hull of the now vacant first space station. Once complete, the crew performed a separation burn, and then a re-entry burn, and landed safely off the coast of California 35 minutes later. So long, Mo. Until next time. The low orbit of the mole meant that atmospheric drag would deorbit the station within a year if its orbit was not boosted. Air Force leaders argued that the station was no longer necessary and voted to allow it to deorbit. However, a vocal section of the scientific community, aware of the existence of the station, proposed a different solution. 
to boost the station into an orbit where they wouldn't have to worry about atmospheric drag for years, and possibly decades. The issue came down to money. But when the scientists secured a significant private financial backer for their plan, the Air Force agreed to hand over command and control of the station to the MOL Advisory Council, who would decide what would be done with the station in the future.